Hi, Stacy. Great to be with you. I do want to uh, make <laughs> our, our wonderful National Park Service interpreter, uh, Betty Reed Soskin. I just wanted to emphasize that was a technical problem on our end. She is bursting with life and energy and ideas. And I wanted to uh, tell you that she is a beautiful, beautiful writer. Some of the best writing I have read, uh, particularly in both for last year's forum and this year's forum, she has written at her blog. Uh, and so, so I would just say g Google her and, and, and read her work. She has a new book coming out in February, and I'm planning to interview her for that book. Uh, I'll post it, and if all of you would like, we'll somehow distribute that to the attendees, because I want you to get a full dose of her, which our technical gremlins are not going to allow today. So uh, my apologies for that, but just want to know that. So thank you. <clears throat> Stacey, if I wanted to kind of look at pop culture and, and film and, 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 and the kind of world of TV that you know so much. I understand mm -hmm. you've seen about 900 movies. You have an unusual job. Yeah, I, I uh, do. Yeah. It, it's, so good. What, it's good. What should we watch if we <clears throat> wanted to capture the scaffolding of how age and, you know, our world is portrayed uh, in the films. What would you recommend seeing? Um, I wouldn't. I'd say stick around for Norman Lear in a, a 12 yeah. minutes and 8 seconds uh -huh. because that... Uh, we can take another minute. Exactly. Um, yeah. We don't see the world that we live in. It's not reflected in, in, in film or on television. And when we focus in on aging, which is a topic that when people are talking about inclusion, they're talking about gender, race, ethnicity, LGBT, disability, mental health. Ageism typically isn't part of the conversation why, in why, Hollywood. Why is that? I mean, Hollywood is such a powerful shaper of opinion. Mm -hmm. it, it, it has huge echo effects. Right. And I know you've done a very deep study and deep mm -hmm. dive. I know that Humana... Uh, helped fund this study uh, that you did at USC. But tell us what you discovered in that study about the absence of an entire, and I, I just find it bizarre because, right. you know, the peak of the baby boom generation right, right now <clears throat> is hitting 65 years old. There are more uh, 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 people over 60, there, but it's, it's a bigger part. We're watching the movies. We're in, the, mm. we're in that genre. Why is Hollywood so just out of it? Well, I think that's a great question for progressive Hollywood, uh -huh. correct? It's, it's not that progressive. And it's leaving a lot of money on the table when we think about spending power of a whole series of different groups, right? right? So let me just tell you how problematic it is. Last year, uh, Humana uh, funded our film study looking at how characters 60 and above were presented in motion picture content. Right. This year, we looked at television, the top 50 series for 18 to 49 year olds and the top 50 series for 65 plus. And many of the trends were exactly the same across mm. popular programming, 72 series, let me, let me no, show you no, what the reality that. actually is right. uh, on screen for individuals 60 and above. Out of 1,609 speaking characters that we evaluated, and we evaluate, Steve, every character that says one word, okay. which is a really low like, hey. bar. Yeah, You're okay, in. Yeah, 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 You're okay, in, great. right? And I'm not going to ask you how old you are. I remember but I was you in a movie in once, and I, and I said something <laughs> like, hey, and the extras on the TV says, said, oh, my God, you spoke. Right, right. Now, now, now you can get a SAG space. after yeah. card. Yeah, okay, exactly. so only 9.4% of all speaking characters on screen are 60 plus. 9.4. Yet in the U.S., seniors clock in at 19.9. So we see a clear disconnect on screen. This isn't too terribly different than film. Now, what's really important is when you cross age and gender. Because right. here's where we see actually the epidemic of invisibility kick mm -hmm. in. Uh, if you happen to think about first proportional representation, let's just take a pause here on this Walk slide. This Only is, three. This has a lot of dots. Right. I'm going to yeah. just focus on the USC cardinal and gold dots. Right, right. Um, focus on the cardinal dots. Only three shows out of 72 have proportional representation. What does that mean? Only three shows are roughly 20% of the characters are 60 and above. Only three out of 72. Mm. And it doesn't really differ if you're in 18 to 49 or 65 plus in terms of popular shows. Now let's cross age and gender and see the bottom fallout. Out of 72 shows that we evaluated, not one had a senior character uh, or a character 60 plus that was an Asian female speaking on screen. Not one. 70 out of 72 didn't have a, a 60 plus Latina. And 64 out of 72 didn't have a black or African-American female senior on screen. So we see this epidemic of invisibility when I said you can't look at television and see the world we actually live in. These data present a really problematic picture How about this television. Is, this is amazing. How many, I mean, we've talked a lot about racism in, in, in Hollywood Indeed. on one level. You know, now we're talking about ageism in Hollywood. Is there any sort of introspection and self-awareness of 
those producing the films and engaging this of this data? Do they, is this by conscious decision or is this somehow an unconscious bias that's yeah. just playing out? Well, I love when people start talking about unconscious bias because in Hollywood, most of the problem isn't unconscious, right? right. This is very conscious. It's this very is, explicit, yeah. right? It's in the DNA of conversations. All we have to do is look behind the camera, which I believe is in the next slide, to see where this problem lies. Because the people behind the camera make hiring decisions for directors, writers, right? The showrunners in charge. When we look at the data, right? And if you look at 60 plus, you see very few showrunners. More dots to me, they're dots. Right, they're right, right. right. Numbers. Very few yeah. showrunners, very sure. few writers, very few directors, right, in Hollywood. So show but, me but, what these numbers mean. Right. So if we look in the, the, the rows, we see directors, writers, showrunners. If we look in the columns, we see age. Only 12.6% of all of these individuals are 60 and above. 60 and above. Now right. let me tell you why that's important. If you have a showrunner that's 60 plus, right. you have more series regulars that are 60 plus on screen. You also have fewer ageist comments. And we know that agents' comments can lead to negative stereotyping. Negative stereotyping can lead to decreases in cardiovascular health, decreases in memory, decreases in gait, and a whole series mm. of negative consequences. Now, I want to take this one step further. This is overall. There were only two females that were directors, 60 plus. One writer, one showrunner, 60 plus, that was a woman. And we found from our other work mm -hmm. that if you have a woman behind the camera, you have more women on screen, more women over 40, more race, ethnicity, more hiring behind the camera. So these are explicit practices of exclusion. Um, and we really see when it comes to putting people behind the camera that can tell authentic stories about 60 plus characters, they simply don't exist. Wow. Very few. You know, there's a show uh, that's been out right now made by my old um, college friend, Darren Starr called mm -hmm. Younger. I don't know if any of you have seen Younger. It's on Nickelodeon, I think, uh, uh, a cable network. And I think that the, I don't watch it, but, it's, but, the, but the notion is um, a, a lady steps out of, out of her career for a while, comes back, but then finds that it's just sort of this culture of, of, of youth. And so this 40-year-old woman repackages herself and sort of lies and, and becomes a 26-year-old. And so mm -hmm. that's the shtick of the show. And it's very buzzy. It's becoming very popular. Mm -hmm. I, I haven't seen the show, but I'm interested in the, in the notion of who's to blame here. And I was asking a friend of yours mm -hmm. like, who, who likes the show, right. who, where's the responsibility for this? Where's the, where's the uh, uh, um, you know, basically the moment when you sort of look at who's to blame for this sure. equation? Mm -hmm. And she said it's the woman who lied about her age. Mm -hmm. And I'm interested in whether or not <laughs> it's the scaffolding of our society compelling that bizarre mm -hmm. and weird denial of oneself and whatever. Mm -hmm. How does that, how do you, in, in the Hollywood sh space, mm -hmm. how do you deal with something like Younger? Well, I think you, uh, you, you as a social scientist, I'm not gonna ever generalize from one right. show, right. right? I just, I'm not gonna do that. That'd be a different type of scholar who's interested in But it is patterns. out there as, as a notion of tension. So I wanna address it you in know, a few right. different mm -hmm. ways. So we see interesting age compression effects, whether it's on television or in film. We have characters that are 40 or over that are women, 40 is the sell by date in, in Hollywood, right? Mm -hmm. So the, 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 the older you are, the less right. likely you are to work, essentially. We also have 13 to 20 year olds being just as sexualized as 21 to 39 year olds on screen. Mm. So the, the, the effects work pressing towards this middle, age up, younger actors, age down, older actors, if they're female. Um, males really get the opportunity to do just about anything and age gracefully and hold positions of power on screen. Where's the issue? The issue is who's green lighting, mm. who's show running, who's producing, who's writing. If those writers' rooms uh, represent a fraction of the population, and what we've seen in our other work, straight, white, able-bodied men, if that's who's telling the stories, right, mm -hmm. then we're going to see a very skewed picture of what it means to age on screen from a very narrow and limited perspective. And I would say it's about what gets greenlit. And, and mm. television, in some respects, is a little better than film, but not the we're panacea. We're just talking about Frankie and Gracie. Gracie exactly. And Frankie. And, and I know that's not in your study, but right. is, is that something when you, with Frankie and Gracie, with, with Jane Fonda and Lily Tomlin and, you know, great cast, is that something that's hopeful, that is inspired? Do you, do, you, do you get this sense that there's any echo effects of that among other parts of Hollywood? Say, wow, that was a viable mm -hmm. project, a popular project, that you might see some dent 
in these bad trends? One would hope, right? The thing that's most important, only 8.4% of all series regulars, reoccurring mm -hmm. characters, are 60 plus. That show pushes the needle. If we were to include it in our, our study, it, it moved the needle mm -hmm. up a little bit, right? Because we have reoccurring characters in those central roles. And it allows us to see more complexity and more richness um, of not only them, but other mm -hmm. characters in the same age, age bracket. So, so the issue always is what creates ratings, what makes money, right? What, what's right. the return on investment? This is a very powerful audience, a 60 plus audience, and they have financial power, right? It would be, it would be a missed opportunity to not tell stories to, to that particular age group. We, we had dinner last night, we raised <clears> it, we had, we had some interesting and, and, and oftentimes uncomfortable conversations at dinner, and I posed this question about whether some of what we see in society mm -hmm. is a function not just of this adoration of youth and having a millennial event every two days and all of this, but there's a certain acquiescence that our uh, elders allow to happen. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering how much of this can be undone by the marketplace, by the mm -hmm. way people are spending money, the way they communicate. How much of this do you think as a social scientist can be shifted if we had an attitudinal seismic shift in mm -hmm. what uh, elder Americans expected from, say, the Hollywood industry? Yeah, I think that'd be difficult, right? Because mm. to create change, you have to be very specific, right? You have to be industry specific, occupation specific, uh, uh, like a particular university specific, right, to create right. change. So what we've been doing at uh, the Media Diversity and Social Change But don't you think black audiences have been doing this? Um, demanding, well, demand, well, that's a great know. question. When the numbers haven't moved at mm. all in film in a decade and, and a company like Disney hadn't hired a black director in 10 years mm. on one of the top 100 films over a decade, a 1,000 right. movies, um, only three African-American right. women work across 900 films as a, as a director, um, no. Mm. So I, we need targeted solutions. Right. Um, so we've come up with this equity writer solution, right. getting yeah. A-list talent and getting financiers to put in their contract what's on screen and what's going on below the line behind the camera should reflect the world we actually live in, mm -hmm. not a very narrow slice that represents very few. I also want to just ask your, your take on politics. And, and what again, when we're talking about language, I was talking to someone from Humana, whether or not there's a new language out there, a new vocabulary that will help us that we don't have today. One of the things that bothers me is we face um, who might stand uh, against Donald Trump or run in the next election, you know, which, whichever side they may be on, is many of the leading uh, folks are, are over 70 years old. Mm -hmm. And you see the ageism Mm -hmm. coming out everywhere in terms of completely disqualifying people right. uh, there. And I'm just interested as an observer, not only a film, you're, you're watching society. Mm -hmm. Do you have any insights into that, into how to respond to it, sort of the language and vocabulary and positioning around politics today? Well, uh, you know, I'm not going to give you my opinion um, mm. because now we're in a different realm. No, I'm it's not right. about, about who, but <coughs> about... About I know, but as a discussion. social scientist, yeah. I'm very cautious, yeah. right? right? I'm not going to move out of my lane here. Yeah. Um, not because I don't want to. Uh, it's just not prudent, right, mm. ethically. But when politics in any other sphere is competing with the media, and the media says things, you know, about characters that are agents, like the comments that you see on screen, right? Or you hear, I'm having a senior moment. Mm. You would never say I'm having a Latino moment. I'm never mm. having a gay moment. I'm never having, I'm having a black moment. You wouldn't say that and get away with that now. I mean, politically right. certain people might and they, you know, uh, mm. but there would be great backlash. Um, that, that we have to contend with. Mm. When the media is this entity that ages comments by younger writers, younger showrunners, right? Writers rooms that aren't sensitive or thinking, or even when this particular demographic uses the same language that can have negative consequences. Humana shows uh, in terms of their research, the power of optimism, the power um, of healthy days being associated with positive outcomes, right? The language that you see on screen is antithetical to some of those those very principles that we need to have mind, body, wholeness. Mm -hmm. so, so I think it's very difficult when people are spending so much time consuming, whether it's on a mobile device, a small screen, right. a large screen, and they're receiving ageist comments, it becomes a part of the nomenclature of how we think about people 60 and above. Thank you. Thank you for your research, ladies and gentlemen. Stacy Smith, USC Ironburg School, Thanks. thank you so much.